Welcome to the What's New presentation for MDA 8.6.7. My name is Matthias Geckeler. At ETAS, I'm the product manager for MDA. In the present video, I'm going to demonstrate the new features and improvements listed here. In the description below the video, you can find jump marks to access a topic directly. First, I will show how to define a color per measure file. A basic capability of MDA8 is to persist various settings in the background. For example, MDA persists the color which is assigned to a signal. This color is applied automatically for any signal with the same name even if the signal is from a different measure file. This automatism reduces the configuration effort if you are typically working with just one file and the same signals. But this automatism is not very helpful if signals with the same names from different files shall be compared in the same view. Therefore, MDA 8.6.7 supports a new mode for color handling. Namely, that you can define in the file explorer one color per measure file. The dialog for the color definition can be opened via the context menu for the measure file. After the confirmation, the chosen color is applied to all signals from the measure file. The little square left from the file name shows the chosen color and indicates that the mode one color per file is set. The square can also be used to open the color palette. There you find also the option to return to the default color mode, namely one color per signal. You will also return to the default mode if you change the color of a signal directly in the oscilloscope. Besides oscilloscopes, also the display in the scatterplot instruments is affected by the new mode one color per file. Moreover, the new mode defines the track representation in the GPS map instruments. The next topic is about a new instrument for displaying battery imbalance values. With previous MDA versions, two instruments for specific use cases were implemented. With the battery imbalance table, it is easy to identify the battery cells having the highest negative or positive imbalance. And the battery imbalance graph instrument supports to get an overview of all battery cell imbalance values. By means of an envelope curve of all battery cell voltage values, the oscilloscope allows a clear overview of the battery changes. You can directly navigate to an interesting point in time. Then the details can be seen in the battery instruments as these support the synchronization of instruments. With MDA 8.6.7, a histogram of the battery imbalance values is newly introduced. The instrument properties allow to define the number of buckets and their interval width. Eventually, you get a statistical representation of the cell imbalance values for the currently selected point in time. Independently from the number of buckets you defined, there appear two additional buckets at the left and the right. These collect the cells with a too high deviation. The tooltip for each cell lists all the cell signals which fall into this bucket. Next, I'd like to present the enhancements related to calculations in MDA. As in the former releases, some further predefined calculations were introduced. You can find the new predefined calculations as all the former ones in the drop down menu. Today I have chosen as example the function for a section wise calculation of average, minimum, maximum, integral, and sum. This new function is helpful if you intend to conduct a calculation only for a specific time range and not for the whole file time range. For the definition of the desired time ranges, a Boolean signal is used. If it is in the state true, the calculation will be done. 
I created a calculated signal for this purpose. This is true if the altitude signal has a value of less than around 400 meters. Moreover, the signal for which the calculations shall be done needs to be assigned. In my example, this is the velocity signal. The choice of the two signals is only to illustrate that both signals can be completely independent from each other. The outputs are listed in the Variable Explorer. These can be used as any other recorded or calculated signal. As mentioned, the Boolean signal I used is a calculated signal. So I can easily adapt the threshold for the altitude value. And thereby the measurement file can be analyzed quickly under various conditions. As soon as the Boolean signal used for the condition is modified, the dependent calculations are re-triggered. In the zoomed view, it is visible that the outputs are calculated newly from scratch if the condition signal gets true and the calculation is performed only as long as the true state is given. By this occasion, I'd like to mention that Boolean signals of the data type enumeration can also be used, but these require to be converted into a numerical signal. This can be done by means of a calculated signal and using the raw operator. As indicated on the slide, there were three other predefined calculations introduced with MDA 8.6.7. First, the analysis of the pulse duration modulation and then two variants for calculating the state of charge for battery systems. The new aspect of these calculations is that besides the input signals, also parameters need to be defined. These allow to modify the calculation behavior to your specific needs. The support of parameters in the predefined calculations of ETAS enables the same capability also for FMUs used in MDA. If your FMU model allows to define values for parameters, you can see and adapt these parameters in the MDA UI. In my example, this is the elasticity of the bouncing ball model. A higher elasticity results in a higher rebounds level of the ball, which causes that it takes longer until the ball rests. As another improvement for FMUs, MDA now offers a direct access to the FMU file location. This is helpful if you want to provide the FMU file to a colleague or if you want to remove the FMU file from the folder and consequently from MDA. And eventually a new operator is available which can be used when defining a calculated signal. The new operator delta t allows to calculate the time distance between the timestamps of two adjacent samples. I have prepared two calculated signals for two different inputs. The result can be visualized in the oscilloscope. A good alternative might be the statistics instrument. It shows not just minimum and maximum, but offers also the mean value and the standard deviation. Moreover, there is an enhancement for the support of calibration data from a CDF file. After having added the CDF file to a configuration, its curves and maps could be used already as inputs for lookup tables. A similar usage of constant calibration values is now enabled. Also, a calibration value can now be assigned as input for a calculated signal.
but to display the calibration value itself, currently still a simple workaround is needed. Again, the variable is used as input for a calculated signal. Additionally, an output option needs to be set to a fixed raster. In this manner, the constant value is visible as a horizontal line in the oscilloscope. The last topic in this video is about some smaller improvements for working with MDA. A frequently raised user request was the possibility to modify the axis names shown in oscilloscope or scatter plot. This can be done in MDA 8.6.7 in the Properties docking window. On the tab for the axis, a checkbox for each axis exists. It deactivates the default name. Then the desired name can be entered into the field for the axis name. The new name gets applied directly when leaving the name field. To return to the original axis name, just uncheck the checkbox. MDA stores the last entered use defined axis name. Another user request was related to the type of the axis scale. Automatically, MDA switches to exponential scale figures if an axis value exceeds 10 millions. Again, in the axis properties, a new option allows to adapt the representation of the axis scale. To suppress the automatism used by MDA, select the entry Normal for the axis figure's representation. Then, not just the axis scale, but also the values at the cursor and in the cursor column of the signal list will be shown accordingly. And finally, two small enhancements for displaying signal meta information were realized. Like the additional columns for unit, device or raster, the oscilloscope now also offers an own column for the ECU information. Furthermore, the available signal meta information is also shown for signals in no match state. This helps you to better identify and differentiate such signals. An overview of all signal meta information is shown in the information center. Finally, you can see here the overview of all changes done in MDA 8.6.7. For more details, please have a look into the What's New slide set. You can find it, as well as further information materials, both directly in MDA 8, as well as on the ETAS homepage. Thank you for your attention and for your interest in MDA 8.